Okay, this video is about finding z-scores and using a table of values in order to calculate those particular z-scores. So we're going to start with um, having a z-score of negative 0.38 and that particular z-score we want to make a little sketch about where that falls on our normal distribution. So a negative value falls to the left of the mean. So we sketch that and shade. This is a, a value to the left of uh, the z-score. And we're using that table of values that um, I had told you to have ready to use. <clears throat> so we're looking up in that table of values, negative 0.38, and we see that that falls at... 0 0.3520 and so the shaded area to the left is 0 0.3520 for that particular answer and when you're using that um, uh, table of values remember that you would have negative 0.3 on the left side and then across the top you would be finding the the point 08 and then you see where they intersect in order to find that value in the chart in order to give you that result for that particular answer. Our next problem is z equals 1.25 and so we are finding the um, value. Our chart reads um, it gives us the score value to the left of the Z value. Now, not all Z score table values read that way. So it is important if you do a search on the internet for Z score values that you um, carefully look at how the scores are given because they're not all given the same way. So the table that I've given you and the method that I'm showing you is that they all read from the Z score value to the left. And that is the technique that I'm giving you to follow. Um, the new textbook has a z-score table value in it, but it doesn't give you the negative values. And so it doesn't follow exactly this technique. And so that's why I didn't want to use what was in the new textbook. And the old textbook did not have a z-score table value in it either. So that's why I've included the table of value in um, your materials for class today. Okay, so we're looking at the z-score value of 1.25. So we go to the chart and we look up 1.2 on the left side. And then across the top, we look at the 0.05. We look up that last digit on the top and we see where that intersects. And so that gives us the result 0.8944. And that is the result of that particular value to the left of that z-score. Now, our next problem is actually um, finding the z-score to the right. And so when I shade it, this, it is the same. Now, you might have a problem that is shaded to the right, but it's not exactly the same as the problem we have done prior to this. But using that information, we're just doing one minus the answer you find in the chart. So I've already found that answer in the chart from the problem before. So we're going to do 1 minus that amount, which gives us 0.1056, and that is the shaded area to the right. So the concept here is to know that the entire curve is 1, <clears throat> and finding the area to the right of that z-score would be 1 minus the area to the left. And so if the table gives us the amount to the left, we do one minus that in order to find the amount to the right. All right, our next example problem is to find the area between the two values. So we're given two z-score values, so we're shading the values in between. So we have to look up each of those values in the table and then we're going to subtract the one on the right minus the one on the left will give us our value and so that gives us our final. So we look up each of them in the chart, find those z-score values from the table 
and then subtract those values to find our total area of the shaded. And then this is just another example problems of two z-score values. They happen to be on the same side of the mean, and that doesn't matter. We still, with this particular chart, look up each of those z-score values and then subtract them in order to find the shaded area, the one on the right minus the one on the left, to give us the total shaded area between those two z-scores. So these are basic problems. If you, um, as a beginner, look at making this small little sketch of your normal curve, where does your z-score fall? Does it fall on the left or the right of the mean? Are you finding on the left or the right-hand side of your z-score, which helps you kind of place, are you having to find just the value in the table, or are you having to do one minus the value? Are you having to find two values and then subtracting between them. So that kind of helps you uh, visualize what you're trying to find mathematically from your table. So those are good um, visual cue points to help you find your scores from the table and then using the actual table values to help you. Now, the next step is to find the area, uh, we have the value of the area under the curve and then we want to find the z-score that matches that. So we're kind of working backwards with that. So if we're given the z-score 0.6293, and we want to find the z-score that goes along with that, we look in the table of values under the body so that we find that 0.6293. And you'll see the table values kind of go along in a, in a pattern. And we find 0.6293. And then we look up at the top of the column and over to the left and put the values together to get the z-score. So we have 0.33 to represent the z-score value that goes with that area. Now, our next value, 0 0.2360, when we look in our body of values, this value is not there exactly. So we can't find it. And what we have to do is to find the value closest to it. And the value 0.2358 is the closest value to that. And so that is the case sometimes. It's not going to be there exactly. And we have to find the value that's closest to it. And so then that gives us the z-score value of negative 0.72. And so that's how we work the other way. If we know the area under the curve and we want to find the z-score to match it, working backwards to find the z-score from the table. That's a couple of problems to give us directions that way to find that. I want to end up with some more summary and pointers just to look out. Remember that we're looking at a normal curve, that it represents percentage, area, and probability. Um, we talked about the normal density curve. That's that area part. Um, just um, to be sure that you know that that's what we're talking about there and that when we have problems that request a percent, so when we have the z-score 1.28 and we get this value 0.8997, but the problem is asking for it to have an answer as a percentage, we would take that answer and multiply it by 100 in order to get that percent. So just remember that that's how we get our percentage value from that table of values. If we're doing problems that's at, um, asking for the probability, instead of saying the z-score, it's saying find the probability, then it might be written in this format, and you're doing the same thing. You're just going to look up the value negative 0.23 in the table. You're going to look up the value 1.93 from the border, the left hand and the across the top. So this is how you would interpret those on your normal distribution curve and use them to find your values. So just trying to relate to you that you're gonna see sometimes that terminology and just trying to relate that to what we've been doing. 
Also, just keep in mind that you don't want to confuse the z-scores with the area under the curve. The z-scores can be positive or negative. Area is not going to be negative. The um, z-scores are uh, going to be on the boundaries. The area is going to be the values in the table inside the left side and the, the top. So just they're easy for people to get them mixed up. So just trying to point that out to you as well.